International, icon who starred in Fantastic Voyage, Raquel Welch has died at the age of 82. I'm Tyrone Bowman. This is Tyrone Bowman Tonight. According to the Los Angeles Times, let's get right down to the heart of this story. And Raquel Welch was one of my favorite actresses of all time. Not just because she could act, because she was extremely beautiful from within and from without. So let's uh, get down to it. Raquel Welch had only three lines in the 1966 film, One Million Years B.C., but her dust-kin bikini did all the talking anyway, launching her as an international icon almost overnight. She parlayed that notoriety into a Hollywood career that burned bright for nearly 60 years. Welch died yesterday, according to her management company, Media 4. She was 82 years of age. Raquel Welch, the legendary bombshell actress of film, television, and stage, passed away peacefully early this morning after a brief illness. So the statement from Media 4. Her career spanned more over 50 years, starring in over 30 films and 50 television series and appearances. The Golden Glove winner in more recent years was involved in a very successful line of wigs. Welch was a La Chola, beauty queen turned single mom. But to the world, she was an exotic actor who was smoltering looks, whose smoltering looks, rather, and curvy figure suited the mood of the swinging 1960s. I like that there was something very superhero about her, Welch told the Times in 2016. Referring to her role as Lona, the cave girl, at least I wasn't one of those mincing little girls. I never wanted to be that. Indeed, Welch had a complicated relationship with her persona, forever determined to prove that she was more than a sex symbol. She was rarely taken as seriously as she took herself, and though she proudly refused to do nude scenes, her fame was always tied directly to her sexuality, a fate she accepted with regret. There was this perception of, oh, she's just a sex pot. She's just a body. She probably can't walk and chew gum at the same time. She told Men's Health in 2012, a unique beauty who left one of a kind, groovy vibe wherever she went. Actor and comedian Sandra Bernhard tweeted in her tribute Wednesday. In an era when men often considered women largely or ornamental, Welch earned a reputation for being strong-willed and independent. In 1970, at the peak of her fame, she took a role that no one wanted as a transgender woman in the field, in the film adaptation of Jorge Badel's satirical novel, Myra Breckenridge. Welch said she had been asked to be in the movie because she was a fan of Badel's book and thought it would offer a dramatic role that might take her career in a new direction. But she said the final script was stripped of the book's off-color humor and absurdity that she had so enjoyed. Welch ended up hating the finished project, as did audiences and critics. The film perhaps became best known for the fight she had on the set with her co-star, Mae West, over who got to wear a black dress. I couldn't control that script wasn't coming together, Welch said in her defense. Each rewrite got further and further from making any sense. A decade later, Welch sued MGM when the studio replaced her with a much younger, more affordable Deborah Winger in the 1982 film version of John Stenbeck's World War II uh, era novel, Canary Row. Welch claimed the studio fired her because of her age and to save money. In the process, ruining her career just as she was poised to win recognition as a serious actor. The studio said she was let go for showing up late and making too long and taking too long in makeup. After a six-year legal battle, she won a $14 million settlement. But in the process, she earned, rightly or wrongly, a reputation for being difficult, and her film career largely flickered out. Welch blamed Hollywood's reluctance to embrace older women for her diminished career. As life goes on, you get more valuable as a person. Many women look better, she told the Times in 2010. Personally, I think I look better because I have lived and I have a different kind of aura about me having lived. Born, I don't, I'm trying not to mess.
messed this up. This is a hard, it's a tongue twister here, but I'll try. Who won Joe Raquel T. Jada on September 5th, 1940 in Chicago. Welch was the oldest of three children. Her father was a Bolivian-born aeronautical engineer who moved his family to San Diego when Welch was a toddler to design aircrafts during World War II. He was a volatile man who bullied the household, especially her mother, a seamstress of English descent. Welch once threatened him with a fire poker to protect her mother. A star student, Welch started winning beauty pageants when she was 14, ultimately earning the state title of Maid of California in 1958, the year she graduated from high school. Though she attended San Diego State University on a drama scholarship, she dropped out to get married and took a job as a weather girl at a local TV station. Welch married her high school sweetheart, James Welch, and had two children by the time she was 21. After they separated, Welch moved to Los Angeles with her children to pursue acting. Within three years, she was a superstar. She started out earning small roles in popular TV shows and films, such as her turn as a co-ed in Elvis Presley's A Rustabout. She got her first lead role as a bikini-clad know-it-all in the 1965 film A Swingin' Summer. After a screen test opposite James Coburn of the 1966 James Bond spoof, Our Man Flint, she became one of the last contract players at 20th Century Fox to sign a multi-year deal. One of the studio's first moves, she said, was to suggest that she change her first name to Debbie, saying that Raquel felt too ethnic. She refused. I'm proud of my Bolivian heritage, she told the Times years later. She quickly landed a role as a doctor in the 1966 Oscar-winning drama Fantastic Voyage, and then her career-making uh, appearance in the prehistoric remake One Million Years B.C. That film's poster launched her to stardom. In one fell swoop, everything in my life changed, and everything about the real me was swept away, she wrote in her 2010 memoir, Raquel, Beyond the Cleavage. All else would be eclipsed, by this bigger-than-life sex symbol. Welch went on to become a pop culture icon, equal parts self-mocking bombshell and glamour-driven variety show host. She earned a golden gold for her demure role in the star-studded 1973 comedy The Three Musketeers and also starred in the roller derby drama Kansas City Bomber and the neo noe noe mystery The Lash of Schiller. In 1981, Welch starred on Broadway in the musical Woman of the Year, earning critical raves. She earned a Golden Glove nomination, a Golden Glove nomination for portraying a woman with uh, Lou Gehrig's disease in the 1987 TV drama Right to Die. During the 1990s, Welch appeared on several TV shows, co-starring with Lauren Hudson in the drama CPW. In 1996, appearing in a recurring role in Spin City and even playing herself on an episode of Seinfeld. In the 2000s, Welch embraced her Latin heritage by co-starring in PBS's uh, Emmy-nominated series American Family about a Latino family struggling in Los Angeles. She also had a scene-stealing role in the 2000 film Legally Blonde opposite Reese Witherspoon. So sad to hear about Welch's, Raquel Welch's passing. I loved working with her on Legally Blonde with a spoon tweeted. Wednesday, she was elegant, professional, and glamorous beyond belief. Simply stunning. In 2017, Welch co-starred with the ensemble company How to Be a Latin Lover with Rob Lowe and Sama Hayek and as the mother-in-law in the Up TV, Up TV sitcom Tate My Dad. More recently, she was known for developing her own successful wig line. Though she believed they held her back, she didn't regret taking on the sex kitten roles that propelled her early career. I am not a fool, she told the Times in 2010. I realized when I came along, I wasn't Meryl Streep who had been put into a bikini. I was somebody that got rocketed into the spotlight and superstardom overnight. I knew this was going to give me an opportunity, and I should make the best of it. Raquel Welch, rest in peace. I'm Tyrone Bowman. Never surrender. Never quit.